Hello once again, it's uh, Slam Tilt here with another remake. Now, I just want to make it clear what a remake is. A remake is, um, this isn't a reproduction, this is a remake. So a remake is a game that's been rebuilt pretty much uh, from, the, uh, from the ground up. So it's got new code, new features, new audio design, um, new lighting effects. Uh, sometimes I will introduce newer mechanics. This actually has new mechanics. Um, a reproduction is, you know, when it's just the same game, but it's just been reproduced, like the recent uh, Medieval Madnesses, Cactus Canyons, uh, Attack from Mars. When they all came back again, they were all reproductions, the same game, just came back again. So this is a, a remake. And as far as I'm aware, I'm the only human being on the planet that's actually doing remakes of pinball games. I don't think anybody else is doing it. Certainly nobody's doing it on pinball effects. Pinball Arcade, VPX, Real World. No, it's just pretty much me, Future Pinball. Um, as you know, they do uh, remakes in the video game world. Very popular. The most famous remake of all is probably Resident Evil. Came out on the PlayStation 1. And then uh, came out on the GameCube years later. And it was a huge, massive hit. Um, and I think we all remember playing that. It's the same game, only they completely... Um, updated it with new graphics, sound, uh, new features. So that's pretty much what I'm doing here with Pinball. Because these games are amazing, but they have very old rules and very old sound effects. So if you just give them a... Got my cat attacking me again. If you just give them a, a lick of paint uh, and freshen them up, you can make them fun for a new generation of people. So that's what I'm doing. I'm creating these games for a new generation. Okay. So I have played this one uh, quite a lot, uh, the real machine quite a lot. Um, so first of all, the uh, the drop targets there are individually programmed. Obviously, they don't do that on the real machine. They just they just all stand up at the same time and just hit one. The individually programmed uh, drop targets are a hell of a lot more fun, but uh, very expensive to put onto a real machine. So that's uh, new as well. Uh, that ramp was a little bit uh, redundant on the real machine, so I added um, <coughs> ghouls, goblins, ghosts, and gremlins, I think it was. And basically, uh, when you shoot it for the first time, it will select one of those at random, and then it will give you a random number of how many to collect. And when you complete that objective, there you go, you get collection complete. And now you can see that the goblins is lit. Uh, so you've got to do that for bats, ghosts, and rats. That's it. And then when you complete all of those, then yeah, another special feature starts. So you can see that uh, that ramp now has a solid lit goblins because you've done, you completed that objective. Let's try and get the skill shot again. Missed it. So this game contains over 200 new quotes from the original uh, Crypt Keeper voice actor. I think his name is John Kesser, is it? I can't remember now. But uh, I pretty much watched every introduction video um, for every single episode of Tales from the Crypt. Just the bits that feature the Crypt Keeper. And I managed to capture a ton of uh, new quotes, which are all relevant to this game. And uh, when you listen to them, you'll think, you'll swear that they were actually recorded specifically for this game. But that's, that's you know that that takes them some skill to to find the right quotes to fit into a pinball game and sometimes you have to manipulate them or edit the quotes so you'll say things that you didn't necessarily say in the tv show now i do that a lot i will edit uh, quotes uh, from tv shows from films um just to make the actors say something that's relevant to pinball like uh, i think i did doc brown in back to the future i actually had him say welcome to my pinball machine uh, he actually says welcome. Uh, he said, "Well, he says welcome to my," and then I add, and then he says pinball somewhere else in the film, and he says machine somewhere else in the film. So all I did is edited, edited his little speech, so it says welcome to my pinball machine. Obviously, he never said that in the film. Okay, so let's see if I can actually uh, get a mode going here, and I coloured the ramps as well, just to make the ball look uh, stand out a little bit more, because when you've got too much. Um, too much uh, silver or stainless steel, whatever they're made out of, uh, the ball can get lost. 
but they're easy to track when the ramps are coloured and individually coloured as well so you know exactly where the ball is going to go uh, can be, get a little confusing up there so I think coloured ramps or coloured wire forms are much better than just boring silver ones I did the same thing on last action hero as well um, so the music is uh, a remix uh, of the original uh, theme tune but you can also switch back at any time I think you hold up both flippers on this one let's try it oh, there you go it's the special two key special two key for this one okay. so this brings in the original music it's just the music I bring in uh, it's not quite as, uh, as significant as the um, as Dracula where I changed the game back to the original sound effects simply because the original sound effects are rubbish on this game <laughs> and the quotes are awful uh, very basic and primitive so uh, you know the, the all the quotes I've added to this game are all brand new and they are a hell of a lot better than the original game the sound effects are all better but if you wanted to listen to the original uh, Daytree's music you have the option or not you just switch back so there are a lot of significant changes here. Um, I added a trick or treat, which is up there on the right, which is now flashing. Yes, when it's actually an extra ball there, but it's a trick or treat as well. Get the ball up there. So uh, you can get a trick, or you can get a treat. It's completely random which one he gives you. If it's a trick, uh, I think it's something like a uh, witch vomits, or somebody gets the head chopped off. Uh, if it's a treat, it'll be something like a ball saver or an extra ball or extra points. So it's, it's a very quick mystery feature, but it's like almost instant. You don't hang about. It just gives you two straight away and then gives you the ball back. So that's new. So, oh, I can get a mode started now. Let's, uh, let's hit the crypt. Alright, started the multi ball instead. Okay, so um, I added Don't Fear the Reaper, which is just one of the songs that can play during the multi-ball. Uh, the other one is uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller, obviously. Um, so uh, I just thought it's just cool. I mean, every time you get a multi-ball, isn't it nice to have a, a choice of music? Uh, there is actually some very um, famous songs in this game for certain, for certain modes. Um, Werewolves of London, famously, that's, that's for the werewolf mode. Um, if you're old like me, you'll know that song. But most of the other tunes that come in this uh, new version of the game are from, um, well, they're from all kinds of places. TV shows, movies, just pieces of music that uh, that I know or are familiar with growing up. Uh, like the Reanimator theme tune is on here as well. That's a very unusual film if you've ever seen the Reanimator. But it's relevant to this because that's pretty much um, the style of this. It's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek kind of horror is Tales from the Crypt, which is perfect for the reanimator uh, and things like that. See? Final cut. It kind of works for that. Um, so all the sound effects have been uh, improved as well, so I had to mix the sound there for the head chopping off and landing in a basket so I had to find the a blade coming down the chopping through flesh the rolling of the head and then into the basket all different sound effects and I had to mix the whole lot together to mix the animation on the DMD so that's the kind of work I put into this game <laughs> when he shoots himself in the head when he's doing a shoot again it's I had to get the gun click the, the the sound of the gun firing the splatter of the blood coming through the head you know that's the kind of work you do as a sound designer um, how it works for me is I can I can already hear the sound effect in my head, uh, and then I just go out and find things that match what I can already hear in my head. So that's that's what a great sound designer would do. They can already hear it. So if you say I want, you know, in a movie, there's a guy firing a laser beam here. Uh, go out and find the laser beam sound, and then the guy will already hear it in his head. So I know what it sounds like, and I'll go out and find it. And uh, of course, that's exactly what uh, Ben Burt did for all the Star Wars sound effects. He already heard them in his head, and he just went out and found sounds that sounded just like what he could hear in his head already and that's why we got the lightsaber and the laser blasts and the tie fighter and all that stuff all came out of his head 
Uh, I'm not as good as him, obviously, nowhere near, but the same principle when I'm doing pinball. I if I need a sound effect, I can already hear it, and then just go out and find something that matches what I can already hear. So it's, again, uh, very smooth physics on this game. The physics have been updated. There's absolutely no problems with future pinball's physics now. It plays perfectly. Very fast. All my games uh, run at rock steady 60 frames per second. All the way up to 4K or even 8K if you wanted to. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. I, I, I only run my games on the desktop. My games are all in HD. I don't go as far as 4K. I think it's completely pointless to go that far. I mean, I've got PlayStation 5 and all the games are in 4K and I'm like, I can't even tell the difference between 4K and HD. It doesn't make any difference to me. The game's exactly the same. So it's a slightly better picture, whatever. Um, so yeah, this is a lot of fun. Another Halloween game that was supposed to be released last year. Then I was going to release it this year, but, but obviously because the future pinball is uh, unpopular, nobody wants to play it, I can't release it. I'm not going to release all this work if nobody wants to play it. So it will remain locked away in the Ultimate Pro game vault with most of my other collection for the time being. So yeah, right across the board this game has been improved. I mean, absolutely everything. An enormous job it was to uh, to do this remake. Uh, one of a kind. Doesn't exist anywhere else in the world and never will. And it is an, it's an enormous amount of fun is this game, which is why I wanted to remake it, because if you play the original, the sounds are terrible, the, the rules are basic, the lighting is quite primitive. Um, but you, you know, you just spend some time on the remake and you can actually make a really good game of pinball that even um, young people would, would want to play. Because it's got an enormous personality, thanks to the Crypt Keeper of course. And all of these lines are coordinated with these, um, the lights on the bottom of the playfield as well. Okay, so stay tuned for another video tomorrow or the day after, depending how I feel. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Well, I'm not saying that. That's not my, that's, that's not my catchphrase. I'm just going to say see you later. Cheerio!